Good evening. Tonight we go after a fantastic story. The story that flying saucers from other worlds are visiting our planet just as we are exploring outer space with our own rocket satellites. Our guest is former Marine Air Corps Major Donald Kehoe, who has the support of scores of prominent businessmen, military men, and some scientists in his campaign to prove that flying saucers exist. If you're curious to know why Major Kehoe charges that the United States Air Force is deliberately deluding us when it calls saucer stories the bunk, if you want to hear his own evidence that the saucers are real, and his reaction to the claim of two Americans who say they've spoken with men from Venus. We'll go after those stories in just a moment. The Mike Wallace Interview. And now to our story. Major Donald Kehoe is the director of the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena. As head of this private group interested in flying saucers. He has repeatedly attacked the United States Air Force and others for claiming that flying saucers are apparently flights of fancy and not flights by Martians or men from the moon. <coughs> Independent surveys show that millions of Americans do share his belief in these celestial saucers. Major Kehoe, first of all, let me ask you this. Most people in the United States in spite of the fact that I say that millions do believe, I think you will agree that most people in the United States don't believe in flying saucers from outer space. They probably hold the view of columnist Bob Considine, who wrote that flying saucers are products of, for the most part, quote, pranksters, halfwits, cranks, publicity hounds, fanatics in general, and screwballs, end quote. How do you feel about Mr. Considine's charge? Well, I know where he got the story. He got it from Colonel Watson out at the Air Technical Intelligence Center in Dayton. In fact, the colonel went even a little farther, and he said behind every sighting was an idiot, a crackpot, a religious fanatic. That included a lot of high-ranking Air Force pilots, incidentally, mm -hmm. and many airline captains, people who were qualified to see these things. But yes. he's just following out an Air Force policy. Well, now, you're not suggesting that Bob Considine is in the pay of the Air Force. He's an no, independent I mean newsman with a considerable reputation. I mean the Colonel. No, I have oh, every oh. respect for Bob Considine. In spite of the fact that he <coughs> suggests that pranks, pranksters, half-wits, and screwballs are responsible for the stories about flying saucers. Well, I wish I could show him uh, any time a list of about 800 witnesses, some of the big names in aviation, including up to the rank of Colonel in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. They're still flying, and they're still carrying passengers. They've never been grounded. They're still guiding airliners in, the radar men are, night after night in bad weather. If they're screwballs and incompetence, why are they still on the job? Major Kehoe, where do you think flying saucers are coming from? I don't know. The, there is an indication that they could be using Mars as a base. I don't mean they originate there, but every time Mars has approached us in the last... Ten years, there's been a noticeable increase in, in saucer sightings. Mm -hmm. And that's been mentioned officially. In fact, the Canadian official project, uh, on the basis of that, set up an observation station in Canada. You say the Canadian official project. Uh, what, what do you mean by the official? There was an official project called Project Magnet. And they set up an observatory at Shirley Bay mm -hmm. to try to track these things. And uh, What happened to the official project? You say there was a project. Yes, they, they ran for about a year, and they had one sighting uh, on a gravimeter, which indicated that something, a very large object, had flown over there. Mm -hmm. But uh, they finally decided they were spending a little too much money on it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Well, certainly they wouldn't have thought that they were spending too much money on it if they believed that that kind of phenomena existed. A lot of people on the project are still working up there on their own time, and uh, certain government officials have still uh, kept the lid on their reports in Canada, just as they do down here. What is your theory? In other words, you suggest that they come from Mars or from other planets, from uh, other solar systems, possibly, throughout the universe. Is that correct? Yes, and there are a lot of scientists who said the same thing. What is your theory as to the kind of people who fly these, or the kind of beings who, who fly these saucers? Well, that's speculation. Willie Lay said recently they'd be just like the man next door, the invaders from space, and his reasons may be good. But most of the uh, top scientists have said that the odds are that uh, beings from other worlds would not be like us. Some of them would be. Uh, Dr. Harlow Shapley, for instance, said that there probably were at least 100 million inhabited planets in the universe. 
And uh, Menzel, who doesn't believe in saucers at all, says that he goes that high or even higher. And among those, by they must be, by the law of averages, a certain number of planets that would be like the Earth. Mm -hmm. And if evolution started at the same time, why, you might have the same type of being. What do you think are the intentions of these people, for lack of a better name, of these people and who are in these flying saucers? Well, there's been no evidence of any hostility uh, during the last uh, ten years, what we call the modern phase. There have been sightings before then. There have been some accidents, Air Force pilots chasing these things. Captain Mantell was killed chasing one in 48, and uh, two pilots disappeared chasing one in 53 over Lake Superior. But uh, I think those were just accidents. Just accidents. Why don't they try to communicate with us? What's your theory about that? Well, I'll follow some of the uh, theories the Air Force people have said. Suggest they suggested to me back in 52 and 53, at which time uh, we were cooperating. Uh, we, I had a lot of very good friends in the Air Force at that time. The policy was to give out the information. They were about to tell the people everything they had. And the theory was then that perhaps these beings were so much different from us that uh, communication would be a very hard thing. They might not, for instance, have speech sounds like ours. Mm -hmm. That's one answer. Another thing, they might not be able to exist in our atmosphere. Uh, we're going to land on the moon, we'll have to wear space suits or else uh, build uh, air-conditioned buildings up there, air pressure. Uh, there could be lots of factors like that. Well, do you think they're down here when we do see them to look at us? I think that it's probably a long-range survey. A long-range survey? That's but, right. And yet no attempt, as far as we know in any case, of communication with us. There have been claims of uh, communication, but those, most of those have been by individuals. The Air Force has not uh, admitted that there's ever been one, mm -hmm. and I don't know, our committee hasn't found any cases that we would accept as absolutely verified. All right, now, let's go at it from another point of view, if I may, the Air Force point of view. They agree, undoubtedly, objects have been seen in the sky. But the Air Force has said time and time again, and this is a quote from Richard Horner, Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Research and Development, all but a small percentage of these reports of unidentified flying objects have been definitely attributed to natural phenomena that are neither mysterious nor dire, end quote. Weather balloons, mirages, ordinary sky phenomena like meteors, uh, airplanes themselves. What about that? I'll answer that, but I'd like to make several points doing it. In 1947, the Air Technical Intelligence Center at Dayton, it's the top Air Force intelligence men, and scientists under contract sent a secret document to the commanding general of the Air Force saying that whatever these things were, they were real. In 1948, ATIC, the same group, mm -hmm. sent a top secret estimate to the commanding general, Hoyt Vandenberg, said these were interplanetary spaceships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In 1952, there was an intelligence analysis of the maneuvers of these things, as seen by radar, triangulation, radar photo uh, photographs, and in 53, the Central Intelligence Agency and the Air Force had a special panel of scientists meet at the Pentagon to tell them what to do. And after they got through, this group said, you don't have proof that these things exist, not scientific proof, but you have a very strong circumstantial case. We suggest you quadruple investigation, set up special observation posts, and in the meantime, release everything you've got to the American people. Now, you've got four documents there that they've been sitting on all this time. Now that, and they have been spending a lot of money investigating flying saucers. If they don't exist, why the money? Why do the intelligence teams rush out every time there's a sighting? Now then, you have mentioned four documents that you claim exist. We've heard in the past that you have claimed that these documents existed. We've seen your literature in which you talk about the existence of those documents. So we spoke with the Air Technical Intelligence <coughs> Center at the Pentagon earlier this week. And this is what we were told officially by them. Three of the four documents Major Kehoe refers to simply do not exist. The fourth document does exist. You can have a copy of it, Mr. Wallace, and you can see that it doesn't say what Major Kehoe claims it says. We have a copy of it, and I quote to you from the copy. The Air Force document says just this. The panel recommends that the national security agencies take immediate steps to strip the UFOs of the special status 
they have been given and the aura of mystery they have unfortunately acquired, we suggest an integrated program designed to reassure the public of the total lack of evidence of inimical forces behind the phenomena. And again, as I point out, Secretary Horner says, it simply ain't so. Now why, <coughs> the, point, the, the point really at issue here would seem, Major Kehoe, is this. Why do you believe that the Air Force says that nothing is going on? Why do you believe that the, it's a fairly serious charge that I you know make. it is. You make the charge that the United States government is withholding from the people of the United States certain very important information. Why? What would their motive be for withholding that kind of information from us? Well, I'll answer that, but I would also like to show you some proof that they are withholding it. The reason that was given to me when they were working with me back in 52 and 53 was, first, that they were afraid of hysteria. Remember the Orson Welles show back, way years back, when he scared people into the hills with the idea of invading Martians? Then, uh, they were also afraid that it would upset uh, organized religion. That was a smaller factor, but there was some fear of it. Later, they were afraid that these accidents, when interceptors had chased these things and had been lost or had crashed, might be considered a proof of hostility. Now, I would never have put my name on anything if it were a matter of personal opinion. I've talked to and read the reports of hundreds of pilots and radar men and guided missile trackers who've seen these things, and some of them are very important names. Uh, the Air Force says they have does this down to 1.9 percent, but you'll notice the word current in there. They mean we are currently explaining. Now, I have in my possession a copy of Special Report 14, which is their Bible on this. In the back, it has a table showing that 3,201 cases they examined, 19.5% were unsolved, and they admit they still are unsolved. You add up what they've had since then, it makes over 12% of the reports, and those are mostly from the best possible sources. Well, now wait just a second, I'll mm -hmm. use your figures. The Department of Defense released an official bulletin of, on November 5th, 1957, saying that from June of 55 to June of, uh, of 57, a two-year period, just a fraction over 2% of all investigated, unidentified flying objects had to be listed as unknown. 2%. So that's your 1.9. What was the period again? 55 to 57. The rest were determined to have been balloons, airplanes, hoaxes, and a category about 12% called insufficient information, which means that the report was so flimsy that there was simply nothing to check on. I must confess that they have, they've certainly shown me no classified material, but they have opened their files quite willingly to us in our preparation for this program tonight. And they've given us very convincing evidence, Major Kehoe, that it is <coughs> largely, I shouldn't say largely, I'll say 99 and 44 one hundred percent, a hoax. Now, you mentioned a hoax? Well, let, let, uh, they I say a, hoax. a lot of good pilots hoaxers. No, 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 not hoaxers. I, I thank you for correcting me. Not just a hoax, but let's say misinformation or sightings of objects which seem to be one thing but are in fact another. Uh, I'm glad that you corrected me about the hoax because it was by no means that much a hoax. But you mentioned a Dr. Donald Menzel, who's a professor of astrophysics mm -hmm. at Harvard before. Now, I think you will agree that he's one of the world's most distinguished astrophysicists. Is that not so? I think there are others who are equally capable but who do not agree with him. He is one of the he is one of the world's most distinguished astrophysicists. Though I think we can agree on that. In any case, he stresses, you see, that pilots are not expert observers, but they, as well as others, can see flying saucers when it's only, to quote him, the wrapper off somebody's lunch blowing around in the air, end quote. Uh, but again, let's come back to the point, the most important point, Major Kiko, and that is why, why will the Air Force, why will the United States government withhold information from United States citizens. For what reason? Because they're treating them like children, the way they did with the H-bomb at first, and the way they were doing with, they've been doing with other things. Now, I'm not attacking the United States Air Force.